Hi everybody. In this video I'm going to do the final assembly and make a spring and then test this hand piece out. See how it runs. So let's get started here. Here's my uh, the barrel and the piston. I'll drop that in there and then let's talk about the springs. I make springs I'm just a cheap kid. I buy it Harbor Freight, and I've been using the uh, the nine thirty seconds by one and a half and two inch long springs for this particular handpiece, and I pull them apart until I get that out of them. So, so I get that. For some reason, the plastic hand pieces seem to like a stiffer spring. You get into the steel hand pieces, and they like a real squishy soft spring in Rand better. So, I'm assuming that's because of the friction difference between the steel and the uh, and the plastic. So now that I've got this cut, I'll take the end, and I have these pliers. Unfortunately, they got shortened years ago but they still work and I curl that cut end down out of the way so it's just not riding or digging into anything and with it setting down on top of the piston I cut it off right about there Let's see if I can get a get a good view it's about how much I cut off right there a little bit above the threaded end of the barrel and I'll take this and I'll do the same thing I'll curl this clipped off in under so it's not poking or riding into anything. It just curls it down out of the way. There's my spring. Goes in here. started at the lowest setting and screwed all the way in and connect it to the power supply here modified compressor and I'm going to use the, the same graver I used in the video where I tested the plastic versus the steel handpiece so I'm using the same one plugged in all right and I'm bypassing a foot pedal I'm using a tattoo pedal and I'm coming straight out of straight out of my compressor box here and uh, bypassing the foot pedal it's just just gonna be on and off so let's see where we're at right now so far nothing Okay, seems to be working. Let me try something else. Oh, yeah. Just adjusting the speed with the uh, rheostat on the speed controller. Well, okay, let's take a cut with it, see what it does.
Let's set it out pretty good. Darn we I don't cut this aggressive, but let's get this over here. Still the plate from the, the last time. It's about as close in as I can get for uh, was a pretty aggressive cut. That's why it took so long. Go out a little bit more. And we'll do the lighter cut. This probably could use a good sharpening too, but I'm just test driving it. And that's a piece of mild steel, so pretty much that one's ready to go. I'm happy with it. And now I'm going to talk about a few other things here. Oops. I'm going to go over the tools again. So if you're going to make these Delrin plastics, you're going to have to have a minimum the tap and die. And for the tap, you're going to need a 2964 drill for the tap. For the die, you're just going to need to be able to keep it square. Because if it starts a little crooked you're not going to get a very good thread you need to be able to start this thing as square as possible easy on the lathe not as easy in some other things but very doable and that is what you need for the handle you'll need to drill and tap the handle and you don't need a half 28 you could use half 20 half 24 half 28 there's there's three suggestions in order to make these three parts the main parts the body the handle and the jam nut all need need those now to make the barrel you're gonna either need a quarter inch drill or a slightly smaller one and a quarter inch reamer. It can be done without the reamer. Good sharp drill. You'll get a pretty good finish on it. Good enough for the uh, for the tool holder. Uh, center drill, nice to have. You don't really need it. You can get by without it. Just saying. Okay, for the cylinder part of the barrel you're either going to need, I would stay between 0.350 
and point three hundred. That seems to be a pretty good area where you're going to get a hand piece that's going to engrave for you. Now, if you don't have a reamer, like I'm sure this is kind of an oddball reamer. Three forty eight is kind of an S drill. So you could use a good sharp drill and you'll probably get a good enough finish in there for your hand piece to work. I like a good smooth, even with a wore out uh, or a worn reamer, I still get a pretty good finish. So that's why I use a reamer because I do like the finish. But you can get by with just a good sharp drill somewhere in between like I said the three uh, point three hundred range and the point three fifty range like a give or give or take ten thousands okay that gets that done now for the for the piston for a little pocket in the back of the piston I'm using an M drill And it's two two ninety five diameter, and that'll put the little pocket in the piston. And that is pretty much all the tools that I've used. that I've used to build this thing and I've had a few questions here lately about uh, gravers well I get all my gravers off of eBay I like the GRS carbide because you'll sharpen them you need diamond stones and wheels and all that stuff to sharpen them but they last so much longer than high-speed steel I've also taken that is a one eighth inch, uh, one eighth, one eighth inch, one twenty five, a drill shank. Because drill shanks are soft, so you can cut them off with a hacksaw and then shape them. And uh, the problem with these is when you're done, you have to heat treat them. But what you do, you hit them with a chart, uh, torch till they're cherry red, dip them in vegetable oil. Pull them out, hit them with a, uh, some sandpaper to get them nice and shiny, and then hit them with the blowtorch again until they're a, a straw color. And then that'll temper them enough so they won't be brittle. Uh, let's see, these are round. These are round high-speed steel rod used as lathe tools, many other things, but they can be sharpened. Uh, what else? Masonry nails. Cheap. They work. You're going to sharpen them more than you're going to sharpen a, uh, a carbide graver. But masonry nails are cheap and the GRS, the GRS tool holders are soft so you can uh, you know if you've got a lathe or a way to get a way to open that hole up you can open these up for a larger a larger graver uh, square graver in a round hole so this is a, a 1 8th I believe 125 or smaller maybe you know it's smaller it's a 095 095 square uh, lathe tool, high speed steel cutting tool. That works. So, that's all I have for this video. Thanks for watching and have a nice day. Bye.